If you are looking for a gaming PC build and you're a beginner choosing your own components, chances are you're probably going to overspend in some components that will lead you to have worse gaming performance. And trust me, the last thing you want on your gaming PC is to have a powerful PC all around while your GPU is not enough for your needs. For that reason, on this video, I will explain to you on how not to bottleneck your system and get the best price to performance possible if you're going to choose your components. I want to say that we will be comparing two PC builds and in case you're interested in one of them, you will have them in the video description alongside some probably PCs that I do recommend you buying for the price. That being said, let's get start. So to be completely honest, you can overspend in any PC component from the CPU to the motherboard, any component that you think about, you can overspend. But these are the five components that, in my opinion, are the worst to spend the extra money because they will give you no extra performance and you will be hurting your performance by downgrading the GPU to fit into the budget. So the first one being the CPU. Guys, if you want a gaming PC, trust me, you want the best GPU and a CPU that will not bottleneck or at least not much. Because yes, CPUs sometimes can have a slight bottleneck, but as long as it's not big, trust me, you will not notice it. There are a bunch of bottleneck calculators out there. I will leave one in the description. I don't think they are completely accurate, so just take them with a grain of salt. But if you're working on a tight budget, you want to prioritize your GPU first and then see if the CPU is going to bottleneck it. Of course, you don't want a really weak CPU for a powerful GPU like the i3 12100F with the RTX 4090. That's not what I mean. But for example, let's say you want to buy a Ryzen 7 7700, but you have $1,000 on your budget. That wouldn't make any sense. And I would strongly recommend downgrading the CPU on that case. Then we have the CPU cooler. Trust me, you do not need a high-end CPU cooler. For most CPUs, just a $20 to $40 CPU air cooler is going to be enough. Now, if you want a 99 k that's a different story. But if you're not going to have the best of the best, chances are you actually don't need a liquid cooler. And unless you really value aesthetics and you feel like RGB liquid coolers are the best looking, then I wouldn't recommend you spending more than $50 on a CPU cooler. But again, it really depends on your CPU and you should do some research on which CPU cooler is going to be enough for your CPU. But for example, even for a Ryzen 9 7900 non-X, a CPU air cooler is going to be just fine. Then we have the power supply. Most people think that because you have a thousand watts power supply and then it's super future proof. And in a way they are correct, but at the same time, you are wasting money. The difference between a power supply that's 650 watts and 1000 watts, the price difference between a thousand watt power supply and a 650 watt one is huge. And if you're not going to be using that wattage right now, I think it's a waste of money. And if you need higher wattage down the line because you get higher end components, I would recommend just upgrading the power supply since it's not the most expensive component. So it's not going to be the most expensive upgrade out there. And last but definitely not least, we have the case. Now, once again, if you really value aesthetics, then this might not be overspending for you since you value different things. But if you value price and performance, I wouldn't recommend spending anything more than 10% of your budget on your case. And I would argue the limit would be 7% in my opinion. So 5 to 7% of your budget on your case is ideal. But if you spend 10%, it's just fine. Anything more than that, I think is totally useless. Once again, if you're thinking about price or performance. So if you do not overspend on your CPU, CPU cooler, power supply and case, you will have a PC that's nice in terms of price or performance. And let me compare two PCs, both being a thousand dollars, one where I overspent on these components and one where I didn't overspend on these components for you to see the performance difference that you can get at the same price. So first, we are going to take a look at the overspent PC. We have the AMD Ryzen 7 5700X at $178, which is a great 8-core processor, but remember that our budget is 1000 Then we have the D-Cool LS 520-240 all-in-one liquid cooler, which by the way, this is a great cooler, but for this CPU, it's not necessary. This one is going for 90 bucks. Then for the case, we have the Corsair IQE 4000X RGB mid tower case. This one looks amazing, going for $110. And I've also added an extra fan in the Arctic P12 for that exhaust fan, which is non-RGB by the way, so it's cheaper. 
And last but not least, we have the power supply, the Corsair RM850 Watt 80 plus gold power supply. This is a great power supply, 80 rated, but it's 850 watts, and we definitely do not need that for this build. The total price is $1,007 after promo discounts and mail in rebates, but initially it's 1067 bucks. Oh, and I forgot to mention the most important part the GPU. We have the RX. 6700 XT, which is a great GPU actually for 1080p high FPS gaming, and you can also do some 1440p with it. It has 12 gigs of VRAM. I think it's a great GPU in terms of price to performance, going for $310. So the total price is $1067, but after promo discounts and mail in rebates, it ended up costing $1007. Now let's take a look at the other PC. So on this system, we have the Ryzen 5. 5600 which is still a great CPU, this is a 6 core 12 thread processor, it's not as powerful as the other one but we end up saving a ton of money and the bottleneck is almost non-existent. This one is going for $130. For the CPU cooler we have the Thermal Ride Assassin X120, this is a $20 CPU cooler that is actually not necessary for the Ryzen 5 5600, you can actually get away with the stock cooler so you can even say that I'm overspending on the CPU cooler here but it's only $20 and will give you better noise levels. Then for the case we have the Bitfinex Nova Mesh Mini Tower Case, this one has current airflow, it has a front mesh panel, 3 pre-installed RGB fans and it's only going for $60 bucks, which is a steal. Last but not least, the power supply, we have the same Corsair RM, but this time this is a 750 watt option going for $100, once again 80 rated, great unit, I actually have the same unit but with more wattage on my system and I've never had any issues with it. And then we have the GPU. What GPU was I able to put on this system that's so different from the other one? Well, I put the RX 6800 XT. This is a 16 gig VRAM graphics card that will allow you to play at 1440p ultra settings and really high FPS and you can start playing at 4K with no issues in most titles. So we went from a system that's capable of 1440p and also 1080p high FPS to a system that's capable of really high FPS 1440p ultra settings any single game and you can start playing at 4K which I wouldn't recommend for the 6700 XT unless you want to play games like Minecraft, Roblox or Valorant. And you might be thinking well for the same price you're correct I was overspending but the total price for this system is $988 so it's actually around $20 cheaper after mail in rebates. So you end up spending $20 less and the RX 6800 XT is around 40% faster than the RX 6700 XT. That's a huge difference. Now you will not get a 40% increase in gaming performance overall because we have the Ryzen 5 5600 and in the other system we have the 5700X but the difference will be around 5% or so so you will be getting around 30 to 35% faster performance for less money. That's why you do not want to overspend. And if you do not have the knowledge to choose the right components, I completely understand. I was a beginner once, but for that reason, I highly recommend you watching the best PC builds of the month. You will have that video in the top right of the screen. And if you have any questions, let me know in the comment section. I will try to reply. I will try to reply as fast, helping you out. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you for the support. And I will see you on the next one.